We are exactly five weeks away from 2024 and I want to help you get that child care center open. Let's get into it. If you are new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a multi-site childcare business owner in Long Island, New York, a consultant to other childcare business owners, and a digital content creator on childcaresites.com. So if your New Year's resolution is to finally start your childcare program or expand from a home daycare to a center, then I'm your girl. Let's talk about it for a few minutes. And if you'd like, you can book a private consultation with me right after. Last week, I posted this video talking about how to get a home daycare program started. If you don't know, I started out as a home-based daycare provider in Queens, New York back in 2014, and now I operate three childcare centers in Long Island. So I have experience opening both home daycare settings and childcare centers in commercial properties. And given that experience, the very first thing that I like to tell my clients that are wondering what direction they should go in and what I will tell you is that maybe you should consider starting off small. I really appreciated the first couple of years that I had as a home-based daycare provider because it helped me to really get familiar with what it was like to be a business owner. Now, if you have had other types of businesses, if you have supervised employees, maybe you don't really need that that little preparation period. But I started when I was 20 years old, so I certainly did. Another reason you might wanna consider starting off a bit smaller is if you do not have access to funds, resources, or credit, loans, investors, if you don't have access to those types of things that can help you financially with the startup of a business in a commercial property, then realistically, it might not be possible for you to start off in a commercial property as a center. You might need to start off smaller in a home daycare setting, which there's nothing wrong with, so that you can build up your business financials and earn and save money so that you can invest it later towards a bigger program. Like I said, I just did a video on how to open a home daycare. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and watch that one after this. By the way, I failed to mention that this is gonna be seven steps just like that video. So that was step one, consider starting off small. Step number two is gonna be the exact same as with home daycares, is that you need to research and study those local regulations. Childcare is usually regulated or licensed in Pretty much all states within the US so you need to know what those regulations are that you're going to be mandated to follow find them look into them read them in full because even though it might seem cumbersome because it's a lot of pages in most cases you need to know what you're going to be locked into if you invest thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars so read those regulations also within commercial properties there are different modalities of care that you have an option of opening you could open a program that's just for infants and toddlers you can open a program that's just for preschool age children you can open a program that's just for school age in some places you can open all all age groups which is the case for us in my centers we have infants toddlers preschool pre-k and school age starting from six weeks to 12 years old but you don't necessarily have to do that and especially that school age group you could have just an after school program or just a summer program there are so many different options of child care programs you can run in a commercial property so just figure out which one you are going to be the most passionate about and have the ability to successfully operate and go with that and do all your research into that one modality. Step number three is that you're going to want to speak to a CPA, which is an accountant for business owners in order to figure out what is the best structure that you should set up your business entity as. Should you be an LLC? Should you be an S Corp, a C Corp? Do you want to start a nonprofit? These are all questions that I cannot answer for you. You would need to go to an accountant, maybe even an attorney, and figure out what is the best strategy given your specific business goals. Now, if you need 
need to talk through different ideas of options of what type of program to run, you can book a private video consultation with me on childcaresites.com slash Janie Christine. But when it comes down to your structure, your business entity, that you should leave to that specific type of professional, like a CPA, accountant, uh, attorney, someone that can help you with the actual business entity structure. George and I are interrupting this video to let you know that childcaresites.com is having a deal from now until next week, Monday, December 4th, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. You can save 23% on anything that you purchase by using the code cyber23 at checkout. So go ahead and open a new tab or click the link in the description to take advantage of the offer that includes courses and private video consultations with me. So once again, Cyber 23, you've got one week from today, the publishing of this video, you've got one week, tell them George. Exactly, one week. So go ahead and save that 23%. Step number four is that you need to find a location, of course. You need to know what commercial property you're going to be opening your program in. Aside from the obvious of needing to find a building, find a property, you need to know what area you're gonna open in. Are you gonna open in your hometown just because you want to have a five minute commute to work or you wanna walk across the street to that center? Maybe, but you might have a difficult time getting kids if there's no demand there. So you need to figure out where there is a demand for childcare. There are certain websites that you could use to figure it out and there are some that might be local to you again everybody's situation is different across the united states and if you are in the united states i can absolutely help you once again you could go to childcaresites.com jenny christine and we can get on a zoom call to discuss your specific needs but once you determine the area in which you know you would like to open because there is a good demand and it's a good business opportunity you want to consider the square footage of the building, your budget, the minimum square foot per child required by licensing, your regulated class sizes and ratio, and you need to consider the zoning for the building. So what does the certificate of occupancy say? What is the zoning for the building? Now, whether you are renting or purchasing a property, there is still a very important step that's about to come next, which is step number five, negotiations. You need to be able to successfully negotiate the terms of your purchase or your lease with the owner of the property that you're interested in so that it makes sense for your business needs. Unless you are a realtor or an agent or a broker yourself, then I would definitely recommend you getting the professional help from one. I will fully admit that for our second and third location expansions, we did not use an agent to find or broker those deals. We moved into those properties on our own with just negotiating or not really just communicating with the landlords of those two buildings. But that is something that in most cases I might advise against because you could be hurting yourself more than you think you are helping by just making things go faster or saving on a realtor's fee. You could have a real estate agent or broker help you to negotiate what it is that you know that you're gonna need in order to help you succeed those first few months in your business. So aside from just negotiating the purchase price of a building, like I'm sure you would in any case when you're buying property, but if it's a lease, your real estate agent can help you to negotiate something called a concession, which is a certain period of time where you get rent for free or heavily discounted so that you can build up your business over time or actually do a build out process if you're property is not going to be ready for licensing. It's whatever the reason is that you cannot pay full rent. There's a very specific documented timeline of when you're going to have months that are free or a certain percentage off or if you're going to 
have those rent payments balloon or escalate over time to make up for the first few months that were free but you're paying more later it's just there's different options but you might not know your options if you're not well versed in that area and for our second and third sites while they were great opportunities with great landlords and something we were very comfortable with moving forward in we did not really realize the full potential of how much we could have gotten until we were in the process of continuing to expand. So absolutely try to get help from an agent that is representing you and you alone and just really focused on your business needs. And if you take nothing else away from what I just said, definitely hold on to that quick tip of asking the landlord for a concession specifically until you can get licensed if possible. Tip number six is that you really want to develop some sort of documented business plan based on your budget, your building choice, and the regulations. Even if it's not professionally done, write it down somewhere. Now I've been a childcare business owner for over nine years and I have never actually sat and written a business plan that is something that like a a lender at a bank would want to see. I just, I haven't. We haven't gone through the process of getting a traditional bank loan. So for that reason, I haven't done what I think is necessary in order to get one. <laughs> but I have gotten contracts with local school districts. I have submitted proposals for grants. I have done other things that did require documenting some of our processes and putting together some form of a budget. It wasn't exactly what a bank might want to see, but it was something that was good enough to get us what we have earned over the years. And even if you aren't submitting a proposal, even if you aren't applying for a grant, even if you aren't trying to contract with the district, having a plan is something that you personally should want to have for yourself so you can monitor and make sure that you are on track in your business operations. Step number seven is really important because you're gonna need to do three things all at once. You're gonna want to apply for your license, arrange your furniture setup, and begin advertising immediately all at once. Your license application process is going to take some months. It could take close to a year or more depending on if you're going to be building from the ground up. It will be faster if it's already in a building that was previously used as a daycare and you're not doing any construction or renovations. But if you need to involve the building department or something like that, or if you, there's a lot of agencies to go through before you even get to the licensing process because of your business plans, it could take a few months to get open. During that time, you're gonna be up, applying, fill out your license application because it's not just about this is where I'm opening my daycare. In most states, the license application process involves trainings, it involves CPR and first aid certifications, it involves education requirements, it involves putting together curriculum plans it, or daily schedules, it might involve an evacuation plan, it might involve creating policies and sending it to licensing. There's a few different things that the child care license application requires. And typically it's not a one, two, three and done type of situation. You might need to take a few weeks or in some cases a few months to actually fulfill all the requirements. Now, while that is happening, of course, if your property needs to be built up or built out, you need to be doing that construction or renovation. Even if it's not to the extent of renovations or construction, you still need to furnish, you might need to paint, do the floors over, that kind of stuff may take a couple of weeks and you could be doing that for a few hours a day while also doing the license application process for a few hours a day. And like I mentioned before, that third component of apply, arrange, and advertise is advertise. You need to be making sure that you're building out a wait list so that you can open your doors with some enrollment to try to help you 
break even as quickly as possible. Now, I have heard before from one of my clients in the past that their state won't allow them to advertise if they are not licensed yet. Personally, I don't see how that makes much sense. Like, I don't see how licensing can control your advertising. Um, I did not look into her regulations to see if she was correct in that thought, but you might want to. You would want to look into your regulations or speak to your licensor or your licensing agency representative to find out if there is something you need to be aware of. And even if that was the case, I would simply put whatever daycare name, ABC daycare coming soon on my building or on my website or on my social media accounts. Obviously you shouldn't be advertising that you're open for business and operating because that is misleading. You're not, you shouldn't be taking children in if you know you shouldn't be. You should be running a legal operation that is in compliance with all rules and regulations. So don't do that but you should rightfully be able to say my daycare is about to open in a few months and here is where you can sign up for a wait list and with that being said you need to have a place where people can sign up for a wait list which is typically a website i do help build websites so if that's something you're interested in you can go to childcaresites.com jenny christine to book a private video consultation with me and we can go over your web design service needs. But if you are savvy with technology, then you should have no problem building out a website on your own. I built all my websites on Wix.com. You could do that as well. You could do use one of their ready-made templates. You could also build a website on Google now. I have seen that Google offers free websites if you create a Google business page, which you absolutely should. There's also Squarespace, there's GoDaddy, there's a lot of options for website builders for free, so definitely take advantage of it. But if you're not computer savvy, you can reach out to me and maybe I can help you. In the comment section, I would absolutely love for you to tell me what kind of daycare program are you gonna be opening? Are you gonna open a home daycare? Are you gonna open a center? Are you going to open a program for for infants and toddlers? Are you going to open one for all age groups? Let me know in the comments below. It's something I'm so interested in. And while you're down there, you might as well go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to be notified the next time I post a video, you should also hit the notification bell. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.